Hi folks and welcome back to the Storm and Cellar. It's with great sadness that we have lost one of America's great heroes and someone that I have come to not only know but respect and love. On July 3rd, Private First Class Bradford Freeman, the last of the Band of Brothers, passed away at the age of 97. He'll not only be remembered by his heroic actions with Easy Company during World War II, but his patriotism, humbleness, kindness, and his infectious smile. Recently, Mr. Brad was honored one last time by the National World War II Museum, founded by Stephen Ambrose in New Orleans, Louisiana, where he received the Silver Service Medallion for contributing with distinction in war and continuing to lead by example in civilian life. And now, my final interview with Mr. Brad, where he shares his final thoughts on the end of World War II and coming home. All right, I'm uh, here with uh, Private First Class Bradford Freeman, uh, hopefully my friend, Mr. Brad, and uh, today we're going to talk about after the war. And uh, one thing I've always said, it's just a disservice to America that so many Americans don't know or appreciate what folks like you, Easy Company, and the Greatest Generation did for America. Uh, one of the things that I was interested in was uh, a lot of times when soldiers come home from war, they have a hard time to talk about their experiences there. Did you have that, uh, that problem? Not particular. If, if they had a little catch in it, I could follow most of the time. So if someone asked you about what did you do in the in the, the Great well, War, you could tell them. I'd tell them I'd, I was a mortarman and we and uh, I done what they wanted done. Right. I mean I didn't I didn't have nothing to do with it, but see it was six of us, and all could do the same thing, and uh, even go down and get the points and do it. We were trained for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the way. But now, whenever they were getting low of the front, they'd come get two of the old boys and give us some new ones. But they would be in training of that. They had been trained too mm -hmm. for that purpose. And they were all that was refilling up that the way that done. And it was a good way to do. Okay. Uh, did you? Have a hard time coming back into society from a combat warrior to to uh, being a civilian again. I don't reckon. No, <laughs> pretty, pretty easy transition. Yeah, uh, you probably had a lot of thoughts though uh, about your time with Easy Company, though, didn't you? And combat. Well, you, whenever you had somebody else coming in, he was part of it. Right. Because. They, as, as, as their motto was, you, you live or die. <laughs> right. It really is a Band of Brothers, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when the Band of Brothers book and the HBO movie came out, did you think it was realistic? Well, I couldn't see nothing the matter with it. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, well, he... Uh, it was a different time, and they gave him things like 10 miles down there somewhere and where he was a teacher. And uh, I went to that even just, just to see what it was, and uh, I met his wife mm -hmm. down there, and she, she talked, and that was in Mississippi. So he, so he asked you your opinion on different things uh, with Easy Company. Oh, yeah. yes. And I think you mentioned once before that you and uh, Mr. Winters was together when, oh, when they interviewed you? Oh, uh, together a lot. Oh, good. Did he come down a lot? Well. From Pennsylvania? I don't think he didn't. He, he didn't, but after the war, we were pretty close. Mm -hmm. And we knew when the other one was going. Right. And we'd meet. Oh, okay. Because 
Oh, we we met before, and uh, um, I think that Band of Brothers really helped uh, Americans, may, millions of Americans, in a small way, see what what combat is like, especially with the camaraderie and and all that you guys did. Don't you think it really helped? Well, I, I imagine it did. Yeah. Because it is all right. Uh, reunions? Did you uh, did the reunions increase after Band of Brothers came out, or was it pretty much after the war? Reun everyone went to reunions. Well, we I didn't go to been in the reunion star with. I was a mail carrier, and I couldn't hardly get off much, too much. But anyway, I did whenever they were close. But uh, for the weekend mm -hmm. or something, and they had they do all right that way. But uh, I I couldn't just take off and go right. from my job, and uh, so I I I didn't I didn't go back overseas whenever they had the picture made. Mm -hmm. It was two of us that didn't go, and I can't think of who the other one was. How many uh, times did you go back to Europe? Mm, four or five. Mm -hmm. four, four, I reckon. Five D D. And uh, and you were you were along the tours pointing out things, right? Yes. <laughs> That's really good. First hand knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you you met yeah. a lot of uh, well known people. Uh, Prince Charles. Oh, what did well, you think of him? Well. Uh, we 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 were sent to we got to go to London and uh we we got to see him there and uh we were supposed to see the Queen but we well they didn't and we were supposed to went to the uh where they made the everything but they wasn't wor working that day the congressman still wasn't so uh we didn't get to go, and, and we pulled around too long. We were supposed to meet the queen, but we didn't. Mm -hmm. But she, we waved at her. She was done coming down and was with the children, and uh, she waved back oh. at <laughs> As close as we got to be the queen. You mentioned that you had given uh, Prince Charles a hard time. Oh, oh yes. What was that about? Because... Uh, when I was there, and he was telling me about, uh, you know, he was a paratrooper anyway, and he was, whenever he told me, he says, and uh, he said, they, we slid out the back of the helicopter, and he said it was over water, and he went to shaking when he said it was over water. <laughs> Make it a helicopter sound. <laughs> and I <laughs> shake it. And I laughed at him for a while. <laughs> he said, why would you be shaking? Well, he said he could see that water before you could in a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. He was a, he was a pretty good size. He was a good fella. Okay. And, uh, I don't know what he was. Uh, it seemed to me like it was. Uh, well, I hate I missed him. Well, it looks a, like he's going to be the next well, king. Uh, yes, the sixth. Yep. Uh, okay. I reckon I uh, hope I live that much longer. <laughs> yeah, I'll live us all. Uh, so Prince Charles, he was a paratrooper as well, correct? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, that's the reason why we went with him. Well, he came here. He came over to Mississippi. He came to, over here. Let me see. It's right up here north of here. Uh, I think can't think of where it was now, but mm. it's up there. He came up there, and I, of course I didn't go, but mm. see him or nothing. But they told me he was up there. 
Tom Hanks is, uh, has a real love, I think, for the World War II vets. He's, he's uh, produced movies, starred in them and all that. Uh, what did you think of him when you met him? Well, he was a mighty good spinner with us. Uh, I, when, when Mr. Wender did, was uh, with it, gave him his thing, he, he, he died in January, and he gave him the message for him uh, in, in, uh, three months later. Mm-hmm. Well, I went to that. That was where his home was, and uh, I, I was, I didn't know why they, they were seated, but uh, I was seated by uh, Tom Hanks, and uh, we sat there and side by side. Oh, good. Yeah, for his, for his, for his funeral. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, Obviously, you were very good friends with uh, Dick Winters. Uh, in fact, uh, you wrote the foreword for Hang Tough, the book uh, of his memoirs and letters that he had written. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say about uh, Mr. Winters? Uh, well, uh, I, I thought he was a much good fellow, and he gave me choice. And uh, uh, I always said that. He offered to do in and offered to help, and whenever he uh, and I refused it, I told him he 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 asked me if uh, if if he if, if I wanted him to see if I could get him in school over there and uh, make an officer. I told him I didn't want to be one. Uh, Cause I was too little, <laughs> <laughs> and he always laughed at me. And uh, uh, then he asked me if I wanted to transfer, and I told him I said, "Well, you you didn't cuss nothing today," <laughs> and so I said, "I think you do all right." <laughs> <laughs> so you picked him, right? <laughs> yeah. And of course he laughed about that, but we sat there and looked at one another. A lot, and uh, of course, I got a lot about what, what, what he was, and uh, he had to work whenever he was coming up, and he t- talked to me about that sometime. So we had a good talk, and, and I stayed with him. Nice. And uh, of course, uh, I'll always remember the first inspection he gave me. Uh, I, I he come up for me, and I put my gun up and throw it down back and hand it to him. Well, whenever he got through with it, I mean, he looked to cook it and he left it thing, he left it locked. So, <laughs> I, he didn't know I took military at Mississippi State. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he handed me the gun, started to hand me the gun back I, my shoulders went sort of to go get it, and I, it stopped. And uh, he went on in, and uh, he sort of grinned at me, and, uh, and then he went and, and he opened that thing up, and uh, he sort of hit it whenever he went over and, try, and done it again. Well, whenever he took, took it that way, I took it and popped it down where I was supposed to, <laughs> and he he says, uh, uh, "Did they issue you a razor?" I told him, "Yes." Sir. He said, "You better get that peach fuzz off your face." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he went on, just smile, uh, went on. He was very nice to me yeah. all the time. A lifelong friend. Yeah. Uh, after you came back from the war, uh, you spent a little time over at Mississippi State. Uh, how how long was it after you got back that you married Miss Willie? Well, uh, yes, I mean, I visited him. He lost. I still worked for him when I went back. But then uh, after, 
have to pound out. I couldn't listen to them speak, speaking whenever they're telling something. I'd think about something out them overseas. And so I said, I better just check on out. Mm -hmm. And they gave me a he offer. The, pre, the fella that I was working for, uh, they, you know, the, the, the Mississippi State send out a lot of boys to where to work somewhere. And he wanted to send me to Nebraska to a big farm up there. His cattle and stuff. And so I, my daddy didn't want me to stay. So he, and he was with me. He, he wanted to, me and my daddy went over whenever he called me and told me he wanted to give me a job. But uh, my daddy told me thought we could make it here, and we did so far. Good. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, so you married Miss Willie after you got back? Huh? You married Miss Willie after you got back? Oh, yeah. How long after you got back from the war did you get married? I don't know, two or three months. Two or three months? I guess. <laughs> I don't know. No, it was about two or three days, days years. Two or three years? Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Because I worked with the road and then the different things. My first job was to work for the county. And a haul of gravel and load gravel and stuff like that. It's hard work. Yeah, well, it was, but it was a good pleasure. Mm -hmm. And I was working with a bunch that been working, and old older folks like me now. And uh, so I had I was uh, called Flippy because they send me where they want to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you were a mailman for. Thirty years? Yes. Oh, that's good. And then I done that and just Now well, well Band of Brothers brought you a lot of notoriety. I mean, not only locally but around the world. People know of Bradford Freeman. Uh, how did you deal with that all of a sudden, you know, everybody like me wanting to come in and interview you? Well, it was all right with me. <laughs> I didn't know how I done it. <laughs> that's that's what got me. Yeah. I didn't know how come so many people knew me or heard of me or something because I didn't know nothing about it. Yeah. I thought I'd just live live a quiet life, like like my brother sort of was doing. Mm -hmm. They didn't have nothing to do with no other part. Uh, the 11th Airborne didn't try to get together, and uh, I, don't, I don't think they made the 82nd did either. Right. I knew a bunch of the 82nd boys because we left Mississippi State together, and so I knew a bunch of them. So they going out of the way, several of them. Well, finally, uh what message would you like to leave to young people today uh, about being American, serving their country? Help the country. Yeah. Don't try to mess it up. We've got a lot of people try to mess it up. So I think it's better to try to help it. Do what you can. Don't don't be too rough on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Brad, I thank you again for your service. Uh, you're a good American. You're a great American. And uh, I just want to thank you for allowing me into your home one more time uh, to do an interview with you. Yeah. And I enjoyed it. Well, thank you, sir. Certainly appreciate it. Yeah. Hope each of you enjoyed listening to Mr. Brad as he shared his final thoughts about the end of the war and coming home. So on this Independence Day, let's remember him and all the Band of Brothers of Easy Company who went before him as they meet once again for that big reunion in heaven. Mr. Brad, thank you for everything. You'll be sorely missed by a grateful nation.